Hi, I'm Pete McCall, and welcome to this episode of the All About Fitness Podcast. This episode is going to be a quick fit tip. Now, normally I use quick fit tips to set up a series of episodes that I'll be following. For example, I might do a quick fit tip on nutrition, followed by a couple interviews with RDNs or people who are experts in nutrition. But for this episode, I'm doing something a little different. I recently came across an article that highlights a study that's very important to listeners of the All About Fitness podcast. A lot of the information on this podcast are for people above the age of 35. What I'm trying to do with the All About Fitness podcast is to help you learn how to use exercise and fitness to enhance your quality of life and to extend the lifespan. That's the topic of my new book, Ageless Intensity. That's why when I saw this article from the New York Times about this study, I wanted to turn it into a quick fit tip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read directly from this article, and I'm going to have a link to it down below in the show notes. So this is a New York Times article that came out in on April 20th, 2020. Sorry, April 20th, 2021. I don't want us to go back in time to 2020. So this article was in the New York Times, April 20th, 2021. It's about a study about how sleeping too little in middle age may increase the risk of dementia. And I'll say that again. This study looked at people who sleep people who are in the middle ages from the age of 50 and above. And this study found that people who got less sleep may be at a higher risk for dementia. And I don't know about you, but that's one of the things that, that I need to do a better job of. I had, a, I had an expert on sleep on the podcast a little while ago, Dr. Craig Heller from University of Stanford, from Stanford University. And Dr. Heller is a biologist, a professor of biology, who specializes in sleep. So I'm actually have a link to that episode down below in the show notes. So if you want to hear a little bit more information about the benefits of sleep, listen to that inter interview with Dr. Craig Heller, and you'll get a lot more information about that. But what I'm going to do is read directly from this article so we can learn the importance of sleep as we get a little bit older. So the research tracking thousands of people from age 50 on suggests that those who sleep six hours or less per night are more likely to develop dementia in their late 70s. I'm going to say that again a little slower because this is very important. I try to get about six and a half, seven hours of sleep a night. There are sometimes I get a little bit less than six hours of sleep. But after reading this, I'm really going to be working a little bit harder to get better at sleeping. This research tracked thousands of people from age 50 on and found that those who sleep less than six hours a night are much more likely to develop dementia when they get into their late 70s. Could getting too little sleep increase your chances of developing dementia? For years, researchers have pondered this and other questions about how sleep rate relates to cognitive decline. Answers have been elusive because it is so hard to know if insufficient sleep is a symptom of the brain changes that underlie dementia, or if it can actually cause those changes. So they don't really know whether a lack of sleep causes dementia or that changes happening in the brain could be related to, to lack of sleep. So there, there are studies, that's what this study was attempting to go after. So this is a large study that, that reports some of the most persuasive findings yet to suggest that people who don't get enough sleep in their 50s and 60s may be more likely to develop dementia when they're older. The research was published in the journal Nature Communications, and I'm gonna link to the research as well. I'm gonna link to the New York Times article that I'm reading from but I'm also going to link to the original study published in, in the journal, Nature Communications. The research has limitations, but it also has several strengths. It followed nearly 8,000 people in Britain, so that's a relatively large population sample. The study followed nearly 8,000 people in Britain for about 25 years, beginning when they were 50 years old. It found that those who consistently reported sleeping six hours or less on an average weeknight were about 30% more likely than people who regularly got seven hours of sleep. So this study tracked people for 25 years, then it found that people who slept six hours or less per night had a 30% higher likelihood of getting dementia. And that, that's really important. That's why I'm emphasizing this and turning it into its own episode on the podcast. Quote, it'd be really unlikely that almost three decades earlier, this sleep was a symptom of dementia. So it's a great study in providing strong evidence that sleep is really a risk factor, end quote said Dr. Christine Yaffe, a professor of neurology and psychiatry at the University of California, San Francisco, who was not involved in the study. So she's commenting about the study. 
Pre-dementia brain changes, like accumulation of proteins associated with Alzheimer's, are known to begin about 15 to 20 years before people exhibit memory and thinking problems. So sleep patterns within that time frame could be considered an emerging effect of the disease. And that's one of the most important qualities of sleep. One of the most important qualities of sleep is that when our brain detoxifies itself. And one of the most important benefits, this is not from the article, by the way, this is just me ad-libbing. One of the most important benefits of exercise is that exercise produces brain-derived neurotrophic factor. BDNF is a protein that can help create new brain cells. Exercise also creates a different protein that helps brain cells grow within, or it helps not brain cells, helps blood vessels. BDNF helps new brain cells. There's another protein that helps production of new blood vessels in the brain. That can help your brain kind of cleanse itself and function more efficiently during aging. So not only is sleep important, but also exercise and high intensity exercise is very important as we age as well. So anyway, back to, back to the article. Pre-dementia brain changes like accumulation of proteins associated with Alzheimer's are known to begin about 15 to 20 years before people exhibit memory and thinking problems. So sleep patterns within that time frame could be considered an emerging effect of the disease. That has posed a quote chicken or egg uh, question of which comes first, the sleep problem or the pathology, said Dr. Eric Musiak, a neurologist and co-director of the Center of Biological Rhythms and Sleep at Washington University in St. Louis. Who he, this is another doctor not involved in the study, but he's commenting on the study. So Dr. Musiak goes on to say, quote, I don't know that this study necessarily seals a deal, but it gets closer because it has a lot of people who are relatively young, he said. Quote, there's a decent chance that they are capturing people in middle age before they have Alzheimer's disease pathology or plaques and tangles in their brain. Drawn on medical records and other data from a prominent study of British civil servants called Whitehall 2, which began in the mid-1980s, the researchers tracked how many hours 7,959 participants said they slept in reports filed six times between 1985 and 2016. By the end of the study, 521 people had been diagnosed with dementia at an average age of 77. So this is not from the article, but I'm going to add a little bit here. What they're talking about is this is a population study. So sometimes public health officials will, will study groups of, of people. You have a famous nurses study, and this one's from a study of British civil servants called Whitehall 2. And Whitehall, I think, refers to government offices in London, kind of like we refer to Capitol Hill on the government complex in DC. Whitehall refers to government offices. So this is referring to a large population study of 7,900, 7,959 civil servants that they tracked for 25 years. Pretty interesting that 30% of them who had less sleep reported experiencing dementia. The team was able to adjust for several behaviors, back to article now, the team was able to adjust for several behaviors and characteristics that might influence people's sleep patterns or dementia risks, said an author of the study, Xavier and Sabia, pardon the name, I'm, I'm messed that up, an, epidemi an epidemiologist at INSERM, the French Public Health Research Center. Those included, these are, these are the risk factors, those included smoking, alcohol consumption, how physically active people were, body mass index, fruit and vegetable consumption, education level, marital status, and conditions like hypertension, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. So this is me ad-libbing here. We all know these are all health risk factors anyway, right? We know that excessive weight, we know that lack of activity, sedentary behavior, we know that smoking, excessive alcohol consumption, some studies suggest a little bit of alcohol consumption is good. Anyway, excessive, excessive alcohol consumption may be bad. We all know these are, these are issues for our health conditions anyway, right? But if we have some of these issues, if we're not that physically active, if we have a poor diet, if we have excess body mass, it's going to affect our quality of sleep. So not only are we at higher risk of heart disease, not only are we at higher risk of onset or type 2 diabetes, but apparently all these risk factors could increase the, uh, the risk of developing dementia or Alzheimer's. This all just goes, this is more evidence about as we age, that exercise and fitness becomes much less about how we look and much more using exercise. Exercise is the means by which we age well. It really is. And, and if, we can, if we know, if we can track that physical activity which promotes growth of new brain proteins and, and growth of new blood vessels in the brain. 
if we can track how physical activity can keep can lower the risk of dementia. I mean, anyway, you, you get where I'm coming from. That when we get over the age of 35 or 40, exercise becomes much more about a means for managing and controlling the age process. So let's get back. I'm gonna finish up the article from the New York Times. To clarify the sleep dementia relationship further, researchers separated out people who had mental illness before the age of 65. Depression is considered a risk factor for dementia and mental health disorders are quite strongly linked with sleep disturbances, said Dr. Savia. The study's analysis of participants without mental illness found a similar association between short sleepers and increased risk of dementia. I'm going to here for a minute. And that's, a, that's an important finding, right? Because we know there's been a strong correlation. You've heard some guests in the All About Fitness podcast talk about the strong correlation between a lack of physical activity and an increased risk of depression. We know that that vigorous exercise, challenging exercise, increases dopamine, serotonin, other neurotransmitters that help our brain function more efficiently. So this all goes hand in hand, right? If you are at increased risk of depression, or if you de deal with, live with depression, you could be at an increased risk for dementia. Exercise is one of the ways to treat depression. And, and I deal with that too. I, I live, I, I'm not strongly depressive or don't have deep depression, but I can go into depressive episodes like we all can. And I really, I look at using exercise and physical activity as a way to manage that. Back to the article. The correlation also held whether or not people were, were taking sleep medication or whether or not they had a mutation called APOE4 that makes people more likely to develop Alzheimer's, Dr. Savia said. The researchers found no general difference between men and women. Quote, the study found a modest, but I would say somewhat important association of short sleep and dementia risk, said Pam Lutze, an associate professor of epidemiology and community health at the University of Minnesota who is not involved in the research, but she's commenting on it. Quote, short sleep is very common. And because of that, if it's even modestly associated with dementia risk, it can be important at a societal level. Short sleep is something that we have control over, something that we can change, end quote. Still, as with other research in this area, the study had limitations that prevent it from proving that inadequate sleep can help cause dementia. So real quick, side note, no study proves anything, right? And you've heard me talk about this on the podcast with researchers and people who make a living conducting studies. No study proves anything. Even in a relatively large study like this that had about 8,000 participants, what studies show are trends. Studies take their variables. When you have a study, there are variables in the study and you look at how do those variables influence an outcome. So you can say looking at people and identifying that people who slept six hours or less per night, there's a trend to people who slept less developing more dementia. Now, it doesn't prove anything. No, no study proves anything, but it can identify trends, right? And if we can identify a trend that less sleep could impact neurological and cognitive development as we age, well, guess what? I'm going to suggest, I'm going to go the opposite direction and say, hey, get an extra half hour, hour of sleep a night. If that can reduce the risk of, of, of dementia or Alzheimer's, well, guess what? I'm going to try to knock off the bed half hour, hour earlier and make it a point. So now back to the article. Most of the sleep data was self-reported, a subjective measure that isn't always accurate, experts said. And that's true. Anytime you have subjective or self-reported measurements, it's not 100%. You don't have 100% clean data. Back to the article. At one point, nearly 4,000 participants did have sleep duration measured by accelerometers and that data was consistent with their sleep self-reported sleep times, the researchers said. Still, that quantitative measure came late in the study when participants were about 69, making it less useful than if it had been obtained at younger ages. Well, no duh. I mean, we didn't have accelerometers in our phones until the early 20 teens, until the late 2000s, until the late aughts, early, early 20 teens. Now, if you have a smartphone in your pocket, you're walking around with an accelerometer and a very, very sophisticated measuring device that can collect a lot of health data. Especially, and I'm not wearing it right now, but if you're wearing an Apple Watch or a similar watch, you're collecting a lot of health data. So here's the cool thing, that I'm not wearing the Apple Watch, but I'm pointing my wrist. If you wear the Apple Watch, you can opt in to have your data included in these studies. And that's very important. So if you have an Apple Watch, or if you're setting up an Apple Watch, there's, there's a little choice there where you can opt in. 
Now, they don't look at your specific name, but they're taking your age, they're taking your weight, and they're taking that health data. I, I strongly urge you that if you have the opportunity, if you have an Apple Watch, opt into that health data. Because now, if you take all the people who are wearing Apple Watches and you can start studying their heart rate, their sleep patterns, their activity patterns, now we get, we get much better data about how certain lifestyle factors can affect the body as we age. So that's just a little side note. So let's get back to that. Back to the article. In addition, most participants were white and better educated and healthier than the overall British population. Good point. And in relying on electronic medical records for dementia diagnoses, researchers might have missed some cases. They could also not identify exact types of dementia. Quote, it's always difficult to know what to conclude from these kinds of studies, end quote, wrote, wrote Robert Howard, a professor of old age psychiatry at University of College London, one of several experts who submitted comments about the study to Nature Communications. Quote, insomniacs, who probably don't need something else to ruminate about in bed, true, he added, shouldn't worry that they are heading for dementia unless they get off to sleep immediately. There are com compelling scientific theories about why too little sleep might exacerbate the risk of dementia, especially Alzheimer's. Studies have found that cerebral spinal fluid levels of amyloid, that's a protein that clumps into plaques in Alzheimer's. So BDNF is a healthy protein. Amyloid, I think, is a negative protein, but let's go on. Quote, go up. Amyloid, levels of amyloid go up if you sleep in sleep-derived people, Dr. Muziak said. Other studies of amyloid and other, another Alzheimer's protein, tau, suggest that sleep is important for clearing proteins from the brain or limiting the production. Yeah, think about sleep as a time when your brain kind of cleans itself out. It's like your oven on self-cleaning or your washing machine on self-cleaning. Sleep is when your brain goes through a self-cleaning process. Back to the article. One theory is that the more people are awake, the longer the neurons are active and the more amyloid is produced. Oh, interesting. Dr. Musiak said, another theory is that during sleep, fluid flowing in the brain helps clear out excess proteins. So inadequate sleep means more protein buildup, he said. Some scientists also think getting sufficient time in certain sleep phases may be important for clearing proteins. That's why I really, I'm gonna have, the, I'm gonna have my link um, down below in the show notes to the interview I did with Dr. Craig Heller from Stanford where he goes into some of the, some of the benefits of sleep for, for brain function. Doctor, back to the article. Dr. Lutze said too little sleep might also function indirectly, fueling conditions that are known as dementia risk factors. Quote, think of someone who's staying up too late and having snacks, or because they get very little sleep, they have low motivation for physical activity. Quote, that could predispose them to obesity and then things like diabetes, hypertension, that have been pretty robustly linked to dementia risk. So again, I'm, I'm talking now. So again, all these things link together, right? If we have low sleep, if you're watching Netflix, if you're playing video games and you're probably snacking and we, don't, we know we don't reach for bowls of cauliflower and broccoli if we're snacking late at night. It's not that eating late at night is bad for you. It's what we eat late at night could be bad. So if you are eating salty, sugary snacks, if you're not going to eat enough sleep, that's probably going to mean you don't have the energy to be physically active to get up and exercise the next day. That's a cascading, that's a negative cascading factor that increases the risk factors in numerous diseases. If you go to bed a little bit earlier, if you eat healthy snacks, if you're physically active, guess what? You're going to protect against that. Let's get back to the article. Another theory is, quote, a shared genetic link, said Dr. Yaffe. Quote, a genetic, genetic pathways or profiles that go along with both shorter sleep and increased risk of Alzheimer's. She and others said, let me read it, genetic path, another theory is a shared genetic link, said Dr. Yaffe. Genetic pathways or profiles that go along with both shorter sleep and increase the risk of Alzheimer's. She and others said it's also possible that the sleep dementia relationship is bi-directional, with poor sleep fueling dementia, which further reduces sleep, which worsens dementia, cascading effect. Experts seem to agree that researching the sleep and dementia connection is challenging, and that previous studies have sometimes yielded confusing findings. Again, Studies don't prove anything, they show trends. In some studies, for example, people who sleep too long, usually measured as nine hours or more, appear to have greater dementia risk. But several of the studies were smaller or had older participants, experts said. In the new study, results hinted at increased risk for long sleepers, defined as eight hours or more because there weren't enough nine hour sleepers, Dr. Sabia said, but the association was not statistically significant. Experts said they couldn't think of scientific explanations for why long sleep would increase dementia risk and that it might reflect another underlying health 
con condition. My, my input here is long excessive sleep might be an indicator of depression, but that's a little bit above my pay grade, but I can see a correlation there. Back to the article. The new study also examined whether people's sleep changed over time. There appeared to be slightly increased dementia risk in people who shifted from short to normal sleep, Dr. Sevia said. A pattern she believes may reflect that they slept too little at age 50 and needed more sleep later because of developing dementia. So if short sleep is a culprit, how can people get more Z's? Meaning, how can we improve our sleep hygiene? Quote, in general, sleeping pills and a lot of other things that don't give you a deep sleep, said Dr. Yaffe. And we really want the deep sleep because that seems to be the time when things get cleared out and is more restorative. She said naps are okay to catch up on missed sleep, but getting a good night's sleep should make naps unnecessary. People with sleep disorders or apnea should consult sleep specialists. And there are sleep doctors out there. For others, Dr. Lutze said, having regular sleep schedule, avoiding caffeine and alcohol before bedtime, and removing phones and computers from the bedroom are among the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Sleep Hygiene Guidelines. And in fact, this reminds me, I recently wrote a blog about sleep for the American Council on Exercise, so I'll link that to that below in the show notes as well, because I wrote the blog about sleep and related to exercise, but hey, we can all get a little bit better at sleep. So much about sleep remains puzzling. The new study provides a pretty strong piece of evidence that sleep is important in middle age, said Dr. Musiak, but we still have a lot to learn about how the relationship actually occurs in people and what to do about it. So again, this was from an article from the New York Times that ran at the end of April, 2021. It was about a study published in the journal Nature Communications that related less than six hours of sleep. It studied people between the ages of 50 and 70 something years old and they found that, that people that, that had less than six hours of sleep a night were at a 30% greater risk of developing dementia throughout the aging process. So keep in mind, here, here, here's the thing. Exercise produces, especially vigorous exercise, produces BDNF. That's a protein that's good for the brain. Vigorous exercise also helps grow new blood vessels in the brain. Sleep is when the brain goes to the self-cleaning process. So if you get a good night's sleep, you can feel better. I'm going to have a link down below in the show notes to the blog I wrote about sleep for the American Council on Exercise. I'm going to have a link down below to the, the journal articles. And I'm going to have a link down below to Dr. Craig Heller, the interview I did. He's a, he's a biologist. He's a professor at Stanford University, and he's an expert on sleep. And really, I'm bringing this to you as a quick fit tip because we can all get better at sleep. And I want you to realize that we can do the intervention now. Even if you get an extra 15, 20 minutes of sleep a night and gradually build up to an extra hour of sleep a night, You'll feel better, you'll perform better, and hey, it looks like your brain could be healthier. So thanks for stopping by, and I certainly look forward to having you join me for future episodes of All About Fitness.